Uh, my name is Mathilde Lacan. Um, I am the CEO and co-founder of Certai. And um, in a way, uh, you can say that we are doing similar things, but from a very different angle. And I'll explain a little bit more about that. So my background is um, I studied engineering here in, the, in Sweden. Uh, then I went into banking and then I decided I did not want to do banking anymore. So I became an entrepreneur. So I have nothing to do with the film industry from the beginning, which is very interesting. Actually, my position is very interesting. Uh, I'll tell you why. Um, but the reason I quit banking was actually because uh, back in 2017, um, something happened that was very, very big in Sweden particularly, and that was the Me Too campaign. And what happened during that fall was that I was very involved in that, reading up on different stories and understanding what had happened and all the different um, sub uh, movements that came out of the Me Too campaign and then I wanted to inform other people about this campaign and, and what it was about and I wrote a speech that I wanted to give uh, at my uh, workplace but uh, this was quite controversial and I wasn't allowed to give this speech so I, I essentially I quit my job at the bank because I thought there is somebody who has to be able to do something about these inequalities that we are experiencing and I have a technological background and I'm confident that we can do something with tech. So that was my background. And now I am the CEO and co-founder, as I said, of Certai, and we provide automatic analysis of diversity and equality in media. So some statistics that we have already gone through, but I will repeat them so that you, uh, you uh, know even more what, what I'm talking about. We consume a lot of media. As, as consumers, we look at social media, we have advertisements, we have TV shows, we have movies, we have everything. In the Western world, this is 10 hours a day on average. That's an immense amount of media that we consume. And this media, of course, has an impact on how we view the world. It teaches us something. So what does it teach us? Unfortunately, it teaches us unconscious biases that we carry with us. This is an example from a very popular TV show that I'm sure you're aware of and have probably also seen. Um, this is an analysis that we made this spring, what, sorry, when the final episode of the Game of Thrones series was aired. Um, and we looked at how are men and women portrayed in this series. As, as you know, Game of Thrones is known for having a lot of strong female characters in it, but they only speak 25% of the time. So this is all of the episodes. Not one single episode reaches 50-50 speaking time. So this is what we are taught. This is what we are teaching our children. Maybe not the youngest ones won't watch Game of Thrones, but we are teaching our children and, and ourselves that you know, this is how the world looks and the way it should look. I disagree. I don't think it should look like this. So if we look at some more stats, this is not a coincidence. Like the speaking roles in the film industry globally, they are only 30% uh, given to women. 30% of them are given to women. So it's not only Game of Thrones. This is every type of video, film, uh, media content that we consume. And we had, uh, you said, uh, what, 87% in, in uh, I can't remember exactly, but you said the statistics for directors. And this is the global. Um, average, 7% of directors are female. And if we look at the uh, on-screen uh, averages for something else than gender, we have 1% of the characters that we see that are disabled in any way, and then we have 1% that are part of the LGBTQ uh, community. So again, we are being taught a lot of unconscious biases because we are consuming 10 hours of this story every day. So, this is starting to become a real problem because there are audiences who are not accepting this anymore, we have regulators that are not accepting this anymore, and we have the industry themselves not accepting this anymore. If we look at who the audiences are, people who are about 10 years younger than I, they are the most value-driven people that have ever existed on this earth. And this shows in how they consume, not only media, but all of their consumption. Three out of the top 10 most important questions in society for Swedish uh, Generation Z, which are these people, uh, have to do with equality and inclusion and integration. And there's an American study that shows that 80% of TV and movie uh, audiences want to change the state of diversity. So these audiences are not accepting the status quo. 
And then we have regulators. So we have national regulators. CSA is France's national regulator. Then we have the European Broadcasting Union, we have the UN. So on all levels in our society, regulators are starting to uh, enforce uh, that we actually, we actually measure this and that we take action to get to the core of this problem. 189 member states of the UN have signed the Beijing Platform for Action, which is, among other things, it targets how we portray women in media and to, uh, to um, work against stereotyping in media. And then the industry. So um, we already heard that uh, the Gothenburg Film Festival also has a 50-50 initiative. This is not, um, you know, this, this talk about gender equality is not unique. We have a lot of uh, different companies in the media industry and in the film industry who are working towards these goals. So there's a lot of peer pressure. Um, and at the bottom here, you can just see a little, uh, little taste of what happened when we released the Game of Thrones campaign. That was um, picked up by 20 different countries and we reached 3.5 million people with this campaign. So there's a lot of interest. So all of these mega trends together make sure that this is going to change. It is really going to change. So how can we support the media industry in this change? Well, what we have built is um, also based on machine learning and AI, a platform which takes in, uh, automatically takes in content from public service providers or from streaming services, um, either via API or via web scraping. And then it automatically analyzes the content uh, according to what we have today is, is gender statistics. Um, and we're planning to also extend that to other types of diversity and equality metrics. And then for downloading purpose, uh, for, for reporting purposes, you can also download the statistics and you can send it in to, for example, CSA uh, or to uh, other regulators that uh, actually require you to measure uh, the diversity in your content. So I'll show you a little video of how this could look. This is an example from a German uh, broadcaster called ZDF, public service broadcaster. So they have their own login. Uh, we are hooked up to their API, so you get a list of all the, uh, all the files that are available for analysis. You choose which ones you want to analyze, and then you get statistics, as I said, this is gender. So this will tell you uh, how much men and women are featured in this um, video file. And then you can also choose, if you choose only one file, you can even see on a very, very detailed level um, in this Heute, which is a news show, when do women get to speak? And when do men get to speak? And when is there no speech? News shows have a lot of speech, so there's, there's plenty of speech in that. And then, as I said, download the statistics, um, send it to whoever uh, regulator you have. This is mainly for public service, uh, and this is, as I said, the gender uh, speaking. And then you can also download the, um, the, um, the graphs and everything for reporting uh, internally or uh, or for other purposes. So this is our, um, our system, how it works today. And we're basing these analyses uh, on machine learning. This is uh, voice recognition and image recognition technologies. Um, so at the moment, uh, we have uh, one project ongoing where we're collaborating with uh, Svenska Film Institutet and SF Studios. And we're looking at, this is financed by Vinova. So we, we are looking at um, how does uh, equality, and, um, equality and diversity in content relate to the financial aspects of a movie. So this is cinema movies uh, only. And that report will be released in January. So keep a look out. And then we have a lot of different uh, players on both in both the media, public service industry, but also outside of the media industry. And I will give some examples. Uh, we've spent quite a lot of time in Germany. Uh, and the first uh, three ones that you see are German public service providers. So this is an example from Germany. Um, and it looks at how, how are men and women featured on German news. And as you can see, the only category that is even remotely close to being equal is advertisements. So the one minute that you have in between the shows, that's where you have the most women. In all other categories, there's just men. So as I said, it's not unique. This is the way it looks everywhere. 
Uh, another example is, um, this is a conference organizer, so it's not the media industry at all. Uh, and we looked at uh, the on-stage representation on their conference. So this is a recording that we just inputted into our system. Um, and they had 45% females on their program, which was really good. It's only that they were moderators. And the speaking time for these women was 27% over the whole day. So you have to like look really closely at the data to see what, what it actually tells you. So this is uh, our product uh, to date, is the diversity dashboard is what I showed in the video. And that's what we're delivering to uh, mainly to public service broadcasters, but it can be used for any industry, literally. If you have a video file or an audio file, you can input that. And then uh, we do diversity analysis projects where we use that uh, technology uh, to, for example, do we collect maybe three weeks of data from someone and then we run it through and then we write a report. And then we're building up our database. So this is something that we're doing, uh, for example, with the Venova Finance Project, um, where we are collecting uh, a lot of data and doing a lot of research. And then we are uh, going to publish this kind of research and make sure that it's publicly available for anyone. And then at the very end, you have uh, one thing that has to do with this peer pressure that I mentioned in the beginning. Um, there should be a label for, if you, if you can actually uh, distribute diverse and equal content, then you should be awarded for that. So that's also something that we're developing. So that was all I had to say for now. Thank you very much, and we'll talk soon. <laughs>